Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Boxing Bookie. It's good to be back. It's good to be back. All right, let's get into today's show, y'all. We got a good one for you today, an interesting one. Blair Cobbs and Adrian Broner. I really like this fight. I think this is a decent fight to make money on. The odds are pretty good, but before we get into that, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. The Boxing Bookie can be asked you for every single major fight, showing you how to consistently make money betting on the sport of boxing. The bookies, the odds makers, they don't know what they're doing. I do. I'm going to show you how to make money uh, every single week. Uh, join the Patreon also. Link is in the description. Link is in the description. It is also in that banner below. The Patreon gets you the lock of the week. It gets you a ton of prop bets that were released after I did the video that we couldn't touch on. Um, it gets you a, t- a ton of perks as well. So join the Patreon. Uh, link is in the description. It's also in the banner below. Just five dollars a month gets you all types of tremendous perks. Uh, so make sure to join the Patreon. Let's um, also subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds go to autism research and recovery. All right, let's get into uh, let's get into today's show. Blair Cobbs, Adrian Broner, both guys are thirty-four. Both guys are. Well, look, Cobbs is coming off the best win of his win of his career. He, he really is. Uh, it's just been two years. He's been out of the ring. Now he had an incident with, with Virgil Ortiz where he called out Virgil Ortiz, and then he called him cheater and different things like that. He said he was on steroids, uh, whatever it may be, and, and he walked it back. He got dropped from Golden Boy. Look, he's sixteen one on one. He had a draw against Mario Esparza years ago on a Golden Boy live card. Um, and then he had the loss to Rocha. Other than that, he's been good. He's got a little of Brian Solomon in his most recent fight, which was, like I said, almost two years ago, 22 months ago. He beat Maurice Hooker up. He dropped him three times. He beat him up pretty good. Won a wide decision in, in, a, in a fairly entertaining fight at the Dickies. And remember, this is when Virgil Ortiz uh, fought Michael McKinson. Dropped him once in the first, twice in the second. And, you know, Hooker fought back competitively, but it was way too little, way too late. Blair Cobbs is a good fighter. He's good on, on, on in getting in and out. He's got good feet, good movement, fairly athletic, throws from a barrage of angles, quick-fisted, strikes quick. He doesn't jab enough, uh, but he, but he's laying on his feet. He's got the lead. He's southpaw, of course. Lead right hook is sharp. Pretty good pop. You know, he's not a huge puncher, but he's not feather fist by any means. He's got 10 knockouts in his 16 wins. He knocked out Brad Solomon. Uh, he had, you know, he's had some tough fights. I'm not saying he, he's the greatest thing in the world, uh, but he's really not a bad fighter. He, there's a lot to like about him. Fluid athlete. Moves well, uses the ring. He's a little bit wild, um, but he's not all that easy to hit. For a guy that has flaws, maybe it's the level of competition, but Broner's not a guy who throws a lot of shots. Broner, Broner is really slowed down. We're going to get into that. Um, also, Cobb's a good counter puncher. He times his counter shots really well. Um, He's not so good in a test match, and, and that's Broner's shot. If, if Broner can jab him and out jab him, Cobbs doesn't really work his jab. Cobbs likes to get in and out, throw his combinations, flurry. Like, no one ever really sat him down and really taught him how to work behind that jab, right? Like, it's movement, movement, and then flurry. Um, he's not a super high volume guy because, like I said, there's a lot of times where Cobbs is doing nothing. He comes in face first a lot of times. He can be caught, and we saw it in the Rocha fight. We saw it in other fights. He's a flawed fighter, but he's a good fighter. Again, he's 34. There's been a level of inactivity with him, so that's going to be interesting. He wants to be up the back foot, and he wants to move it, and that's going to be that's going to be interesting because Broner was typically a, a back foot guy. It's not really the case anymore. Broner's a, if you if you watch his last fight with, with Hitchinson, and, and and we talk about inactivity, uh, Broner is the definition uh, of inactive, even for a previous PBC guy. And PBC guys like you know spent only about like every once a year and a half. 
Uh, but that Pacquiao fight was January of 2019. All right. Since then, he's fought just twice. He took two years off, fought Giovanni Santiago. Took a year and a half off, fought Hutchinson. He's been out of the ring a year again. Uh, it's been almost a year to the day. So in the last four and a half years, we'll call it, he's fought twice. Giovanni Santiago fight, which almost everyone thinks he lost, which they somehow scored for him wide, which made no sense. And then he fought Bill Hutchinson. Uh, and Bill Hutchinson, I mean, make what you want of it. And then now he's had a year off, and now he's going to fight Blair Cobbs. He's, Broner still has a nice jab. There's still things that Broner does well. He can still fight in both stances. We saw him fight a lot in, in the southpaw stance uh, in the Hutchinson fight. He still has decent pop. Still the same AB. He does not let his hands go. And now there's less movement. He's heavy. If you watch the Hudson's fight, he's heavy on the front foot. There's less movement. He's 34 now. He's not in great shape, right? He hasn't always taken the best care of his body. So he, 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 he fights a lot older than he did even just two years ago. That movement, him really using the ring, using the ring, that's gone. He's going to come forward now. He's going to jab more. Can he get Cobbs to kind of get in a battle of jabs with him? If he can, that's his path to victory. He looks a little aged. He looks a little worn. I don't want to say shot, but he looks a little shot. He stands in front of you. There's still almost no combination. It's one shot, counter punch, one shot, counter punch. He'll jab, you know, he'll look for a hook. Uh, there's, there's no combinations. And his stand in, he still gets hit a lot. He slowed down. He'll show up. If you throw, and, and this is what I see happening. I see cops getting in, throwing combinations, and and Broner showing up. I, I like this fight a lot. He, he's not aged. Well, he still has good timing on the left hook. He, he'll fight out of the south post, then to the right hook. He's got good timing on it. He does. He still has that. Like you can still see some remnants of that world class fighter that he was. To be honest, like when you look through Broner's resume, I don't know if there's ever anyone on that resume who he beat, who's as good as Blair Cobbs. Never in his whole career, right? Like you, when you really look at it, in in his last. So, so he's got the win over Hutchinson and the win over Santiago. He's 2-2-1 two, two and one since over the last, what is that, seven years. 2-2-1. Two, two and one. A loss to Mikey Garcia, a loss to Manny Packer, a draw to Jesse Vargas, and went to Javon Santiago, which everyone thinks he lost, and Bill Hutchinson. And before his, his best win, Adrian Granados, Right, Emmanuel Taylor. It's really not there. The loss to McDonough, a win over Melanaji. I guess the win over Melanaji, which again most people think he lost, would be his best win. Antonio DeMarco is the other one. There's there's really not a ton of meat on that bone for that when it comes to that resume. I you know what I'm saying? Like Blair Cobbs would be one of the best wins, and that was a peak Broner. That burner is gone. So now we're looking at this one. Let's take a look at the odds. Let's see what we got. I guess I'm tipping my hand here. You guys know that I'm taking Cobbs to win the fight. And I'm really confident that Cobbs is going to win this fight. Um, this is a great bet. Minus 180, so the odds aren't crazy. Put 50, you know, look, I don't want to put this in my parlay, but this is a really good bet. 150, one and a half times your normal bet. It's going to make it 83-33. This is a good bet. Uh, I kind of like it to go to the distance, too. If, if you want to add the distance, I, I like that. I'm going to take the over. I like that, too. Uh, but right now, this bet, I think it's simple. I think it's straightforward. Just take – just whatever your normal bet is. Cobb's going to win this fight. Uh, your normal bet, one and a half times that bet. Put, put money on this. This is an opportunity to make money. That's what I got, guys. Uh, let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow or uh, join the Patreon. Link is in the description. Link is in the description. Uh, it is, what is it, June 7th, 2024, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. 
Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.